Today we'll be covering a movie that might just feature one of the most terrifying things ever put to the screen. One of the most horrific and despicable things a person could possibly ever imagine. The Irish. Directed by Damien McCarthy, Caveat is an Irish horror movie that surprisingly follows the story of an Irish person. Caveat being Damien's feature directorial debut after many years of creating short films, which are films that happen to feature short people. Short films that you're actually able to watch for free on his YouTube channel. Eventually, Damien would be given the opportunity to bring his vision to life and decided to keep it close to home and use the inspiration of his surroundings to create a classic haunted house tale, but with a twist. The movie begins with someone engaging in a good old fashioned way to pass the time by randomly stabbing the wall. It's a woman named Olga who's holding up a toy rabbit as it appears to be directed her towards a certain spot in the basement because it really thinks that there should be a glory hole down there. It then cuts to the main protagonist of the movie, an amnesiac named Isaac, with a man named Barrett. Barrett has a proposition for Isaac that unfortunately doesn't involve a glory hole, but something even better mentally unstable women. Barrett is Olga's uncle, and Olga is unfortunately quite mentally unwell, and her mother is currently missing. Olga keeps returning to the old dilapidated house where her father previously took his own life, because he forgot that there would be a countdown to respawn. But due to Olga being like the average YouTuber and suffering with severe psychological problems, Barrett doesn't like the idea of her being out there alone in her current state, so decides to recruit the help of a man who possibly can't even remember to wipe his own ass to head out to the extremely remote home to supervise her. Barrett Barrett being someone that Isaac has absolutely zero memory of, but considering that he's being offered the currency of 200 Irish potatoes a night, he accepts. But what he fails to realise is that Barrett suffers from extreme ADHD and has seemed to quite literally forgotten to mention anything at all. Like that Isaac, the man who can't swim, will be staying in the house that just so happens to be on its own private isolated island in the middle of a lake, and that he must wear a harness that keeps him restrained at all times, forcing him to not enter certain rooms in the house, including the restroom, because who really needs one of those anyway. And after arriving for what was proposed to be a five day stay with no toothbrush or extra clothes, reluctantly Isaac agrees to wear the chained harness due to Olga having an extreme fear of being attacked in the middle of the night. Isaac with his stinky breath is introduced to Olga, who's currently in a catatonic state due to that edible being much stronger than she anticipated. While heading outside to poo all over the place due to being declined the basic use of a lavatory, Isaac discovers a dog tied up outside and decides to feed it with what appears to quite literally be the the only can of food in the house, because let's be real, dogs deserve it more than us. After Barrett leaves and Olga proceeds to do crazy lady things, Isaac proceeds to head to the room that he'll be staying in, where he proceeds to demonstrate his psychopathic tendencies by going to sleep without the covers on. A picture on the wall with a woman holding a rabbit proceeds to become a picture on the floor with a woman holding a rabbit, as it seemingly drops on its own, causing Isaac to respond by facing it the other way, because girls are intimidating and I'm scared of them. And after waking up from dreaming about the painting talking to him because he has no friends, he finds Olga's rabbit in the fireplace, before finding Olga not in the fireplace, but wielding a crossbow inside the house, because you never know when a random bearded ginger man will appear. After having a conversation with Olga for the first time, and immediately asking how her father died, due to a certain level of social unawareness caused by the unfortunate affliction of being a ginger, Olga tells him that he used this very own crossbow on himself, and she carries it around to presumably carry on the family tradition. Apparently he ended up doing it due to being locked down there in the basement with his harness on by his wife while being extremely claustrophobic. What a cute love story. After casually talking to this mentally unstable woman wielding a life-threatening weapon, Isaac proceeds to calmly sit down with his back turned to the entrance, where the toy bunny rabbit begins to beat its drum just as the basement door slowly begins to open behind him right after he closed it. Apparently the rabbit wants to show him something really cool down there, as after Isaac asks if there's anyone down there, the rabbit responds by playing the drum. So instead of quite literally doing anything else other than what he's about to do, Isaac proceeds to walk down the stairs of the creepy dark basement due to the orders of a possessed children's toy. Hearing noises coming from the hole that Olga was creating at the beginning of the movie, he comes across the absolutely disgusting and horrific sight of a woman. It's Olga's mother who's won the world's longest game of hide and seek after taking crossbow arrows to the chest before deliberately being obscured by a flimsy wooden wall. The only way to get help and alert anyone about this is by using a phone. And it just so happens to be that the only phone in the house is the landline in Olga's room because Isaac doesn't carry a smartphone due to the 5G radiation turning 
keeping the frogs gay. Olga's room being somewhere he simply can't access, the whole point of wearing the harness in the first place. So he decides to break an air vent as Olga is currently in another one of her fancy little daydreams, where he proceeds to call Barrett instead of immediately calling the police, who you very much should call first, after coming across some dead chick in the basement. Barrett tells him not to worry about it, as dead women tend to find themselves deliberately hidden in basements from time to time, and that he's coming to sort it out. So after deciding to not call the police, because I guess he just kind of forgot about them with his amnesia, after locking Olga in her room, she calls out to him over the PA system to tell Isaac that her father and uncle killed her mother because divorces are overrated. After agreeing to hand Isaac the crossbow and putting on a jacket he recognises, she tells him that he's already been here before and left the jacket last time he was here, because apparently he has a habit of meeting mentally unstable women on secluded islands. We all have our hobbies, I guess. Slightly questionable activities aside, we learn that he's actually quite fond of slightly questionable activities, because she then tells him that he was the one to actually lock her father in the basement, which gave him the sudden inspiration to receive a brain piercing. Barrett paid to have his own brother killed, and Isaac was apparently the man for the job, making it slightly questionable as to why Barrett would hire Isaac to come back out here, possibly risking his memory to trigger again, considering that he managed to get off scot-free after convincing a man to commit a heinous crime, followed by him just kind of forgetting about it. After calling Barrett, who confirms the story, Isaac tries to get himself out by having a little tug in the basement, but to no avail. With absolutely no one else knowing where he is, he realises that it's up to him to get himself out of this situation, unless he fancies himself a few extra arrow sight breathing holes in his body, so reaches through the air vent in Olga's room to try and grab the key. But what ends up getting grabbed instead is his hand, because Olga is lonely, before she suddenly gets a little too excited and snaps one of his fingers in half, because two is always better than one. After snapping it back into place, he suddenly remembers the dead mother's dank dusty hole, the one that Olga created in the beginning of the movie, and on the other side of that hole is the dead mother with another key around her neck. So after reaching through the forbidden glory hole to grab it, he frees himself from the harness, when suddenly the lights go out as he hears someone doing a little cry. After making it out of the house and into the pitch black darkness, with no boat and no ability to swim, he decides to head right back into the house, because sure, why not? He finds Olga in another catatonic state and takes the opportunity to put her in the harness instead, because he's starting to run out of good fingers. Finally deciding that maybe now would be a good time to call the police about the matter of a slightly inconvenient murder, it's too late because the phone lines have been cut, so decides that maybe he should just give up and go for a little nap, because when the going gets tough, just go to sleep. He uses the jacket that he left here last time, and dreams about being approached by Barrett to lock his brother in the basement because the concept of doors scares him personally. Barrett wanted his brother out of the picture due to him having a mental breakdown and no longer being able to trust him not to tell anyone that they committed a murder. Isaac pukes at the thought of having to close a door, which gives Olga the perfect opportunity to reach into the room and steal back the crossbow, before Isaac partakes in my ideal date being shot in the leg by a schizophrenic woman. After flirting with Isaac, but in a really weird way, he locks himself in the bathroom and starts to remember more details about the events that previously unfolded here. You know, the exact type of thing that Barrett wouldn't want to happen. He entered the house, but instead of locking the basement door, he wrote down a note to warn Barrett's brother before coming across the basement door already locked. And after heading down there to check out the cool mold spots for himself, he comes across Barrett's brother loving his woman every day of the month as his face is covered in blood. Apparently the taste of pennies really got to him, because after fleeing the island, Isaac would be told that the man died of his wounds because he couldn't keep his blood inside like a real man. But Barrett would find the note left by Isaac, and being more of a postcard guy himself, decides that he would sneak into Isaac's flat while he's drunk to push him over the balcony to see if he would bounce. Turns out that the only thing that bounced was Isaac's skull off the concrete, leading to the amnesia and him forgetting about the entire thing, which makes it even more bewildering as to why Barrett would send him back here in the first place. And speaking of strange and unexpected explainable things, much like the basement door earlier, suddenly a panel on the bathroom wall opens, revealing a small crawl space between the walls that Isaac can use to escape. But what he doesn't count on encountering down there is one of his deepest, darkest fears. A female. For a split second, he thinks that he sees the corpse of the mother corpsing it up down there, before climbing down the end of the tunnel and into the basement to find her untouched in her original position, with the arrow still in her chest. Although it does look like that she might actually be breathing, or perhaps the acid has just started to kick in, which might explain why she's now looking directly at me. Using the saw left in the wall by Olga, he starts to cut through the wall accompanied by his new slightly smelly friend, when suddenly Olga begins descending into the basement just as Barrett now arrives. But the nice little family reunion is cut 
cut short as Barrett calls Olga an idiot and spots Isaac behind the wall before getting shot in the back with the crossbow because arrows hurt more than words. Ecstatic by their healthy family dynamic, she walks back up the stairs and locks Barrett down there when suddenly the blade continues to cut through the wood. Barrett, trying to assure Isaac that they're going to work together to get Olga, is laying in wait getting ready to ambush him when suddenly Isaac begins speaking through the PA system, meaning that he's either managed to get out of the crawl space or that he's got telekinesis. That's not him cutting. The wall is then fully cut, followed by the mother slowly peeking around the corner at Barrett, just as Olga sees Isaac outside with the dog and the movie comes to an end. And before this video comes to an end, I'd like to just give a massive shout out to all of the YouTube members and patrons. The people who every month continue to go out of their way to help support the channel, something which I greatly appreciate. If you're interested in becoming a YouTube member or patron yourself, not only are you just generally being a great support, but you also get access to a few little perks, like being able to join the private Discord server, where you can then see all uncensored versions of videos going forwards. So starting off with this week's new YouTube signups, a massive thank you to Jane Seaman, KST, Isaac Konoski, Mia, Mert Byra, Tops, Topfy, That Guy AD, Fabrico Rua Sanchez, and Kuog. Now moving over to this week's new Patreon signups, a massive thank you to Jacob Wood, Madeline Thomas, Respect, John Hughes, Nabila, Fad Wharf, and Angel Calzada. So once again, a massive shout out to all of the YouTube members and patrons, and a big thank you to everyone else for watching.